How did Japan invade Korea and captured women in their late 16th century, a period known as the Injin War? The Injin War was a series of invasions launched by Japan against Korea and China from 1592 to 1598. It was one of the largest and most devastating wars in East Asian history, involving hundreds of thousands of soldiers, sailors, and civilians on both sides. The war was initiated by Toyotomi Hideyoshi, the de facto ruler of Japan who had ambitions to conquer China and become the supreme leader of Asia. To achieve his goal, he needed to secure a base in Korea, which was a tributary state of the Ming Dynasty of China. Hideyoshi mobilized a massive army of over 150,000 men, composed of feudal lords and their retainers, as well as mercenaries and pirates. He also built a large fleet of ships to transport his troops across the sea. He divided his forces into three armies, the Eastern Army, led by Konishi Yukinaga, the Middle Army, led by Kachu Kiyomasa, and the Western Army, led by Kuroda Nagamasa. He ordered them to invade Korea from three different routes and converge on the capital city of Hansong, which is now Seoul. The invasion caught the Koreans by surprise as they had no prior warning or intelligence of Japan's intentions. The Korean army was poorly trained and equipped and lacked central command and coordination. The Japanese army quickly overran the Korean defenses and advanced toward Hansong, capturing several cities and fortresses along the way. The Korean king Senjo fled to the north with his court and officials, leaving behind his people to face the invaders. The Japanese army was ruthless and brutal in its treatment of the Korean population. They massacred thousands of civilians, burned villages and towns, looted temples and palaces, and destroyed cultural relics and monuments. They also captured many Korean women and girls who were subjected to sexual slavery and violence. The Japanese soldiers raped, tortured, mutilated, and killed their captives or sold them as concubines or prostitutes to other soldiers or merchants. Some estimates suggest that up to 200,000 Korean women were taken by the Japanese during the war. The plight of these women was horrific and heartbreaking. They suffered unimaginable physical and psychological trauma, and many died from disease, starvation, or suicide. Some managed to escape or were rescued by Korean or Chinese forces, but they faced social stigma and discrimination in their own society. They were often shunned by their families and communities who considered them tainted or dishonored by their ordeal. They had little to no support or recognition for their suffering. They were also oppressed by a patriarchal and feudal system that valued them less than men and treated them as property or commodities. They had no voice or agency in their own fate, and they were forced to endure unimaginable horrors and hardships. One of the most famous examples of these women was Lady Nonge. She was a Kisang, a female entertainer in Jinju Castle, a strategic fortress that resisted the Japanese invasion. She was known for her beauty, intelligence, and patriotism. She seduced a Japanese general named Kiyomura Rokusuki during a banquet and then threw herself into the Nam River with him in her arms, killing them both. She sacrificed her life to avenge her country and people. Her act of heroism was motivated by her love and loyalty for Korea as well as her hatred and resentment for Japan. She witnessed the atrocities and horrors that the Japanese army committed against her fellow Koreans. She also lost her lover Choi Gyeonghui, who was a provincial official and a military commander who fought against the Japanese. He was assassinated by a Japanese spy in 1593. Another example was Lady Jong, who was a noblewoman in Jala province. She was captured by the Japanese along with her husband and son who were both killed in front of her eyes. She was then taken to Japan as a slave of a daimyo or a feudal lord named Hosukawa Tadayoki. She endured years of abuse and humiliation from her master and his wife, but she never gave up her dignity or fate. She secretly taught the Korean language and culture to other captives and helped them escape or communicate with their families. She also wrote poems expressing her sorrow and longing for her homeland. These women, despite the darkness that surrounded them, managed to find ways to assert their dignity, whether through acts of sacrifice, defiance, or quiet resistance. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget to leave a comment down below and let us know what you thought about this topic. See you next time, and bye for now.